Tämä hostailit sen kävoteen! Tää! Ou! Tää! Oh, come here, you rotten little mozzie! Oh, wow, this is the last time I travel to Africa without any insect repellent! Oh, ah! Oh, come here, will you? Ow! Oh. oh, stop fussing, you microphonic moron! Look, you're almost there! Yeah, but I've got more holes in me than the Chelsea defence. You'd better check the map, Mick. The map, Mick, Mac. Oh, the map. Now, where did I put it? Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, sorry, this is my souvenir list. Actually, they're all for Desiville. Come on, get that map out of Africa now. Don't worry, I've got it. Uh, well, bring it here. It, no, not like there that. There you are. Other way up. All right, Mac, you're the expert here. Oh, do you have to take things so literally? Turn the map upside down, Mick, not yourself. Hup. Now I'm here, right? That's right, near the ancient kingdom of Monomatapa. Mono... Mono what? Monomatapa. Oh! Oh, I get it. So on the one hand you've got Monomatapa, and on the other this Stereo Tapper, right? Us microphones know a lot about mono and stereo, you know? Aye, uh, very funny. Monomatapa was a large African territory between the Zambezi, the Sabi and the Mozambican coast, where the Bantu tribe lived, in complete isolation. Oh, uh, I don't like the look of this. It's worse than being used by Pavarotti in a live concert. Come to think of it, he's probably more into snake rattle and roll than opera. Ah, don't be such a chicken, Mick. Me a chicken? It's time you saw why they all call me Karate Mick. Oh, I'm flabbergasted. There. So where did you learn karate, Mick? That's a daft question, Mac. I thought you knew that all us microphones are made in Japan. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, let's go. Didn't you see how he just brought me down? You ran into an adobe hut, Mick. Very strong material, by the way. Yes, yeah, so I just found out. This is a typical Bantu village at the end of the 15th century. And as you can see, the villagers are going about their normal daily routine. Aye, aye. It looks pretty lively down there. Oh, I think I'm going to have to have a look around, Mick. Oh, they got all mob pods here. Microphones. People who enjoy getting punched full of holes. I never thought piercing would be popular in Africa, too. Oh, I Mick. This kind of bodily adornment forms part of the tradition of a number of African tribes. Three lighters, three for 20, roll up, three lighters. Roll up. Come on, oh! Morning, this is Kong. Ah, now's the baby today. Ah, definitely takes off his father. As you can see, Bantu had everything a modern city has, including certain measures to control the traffic. <laughs> that should slow the road hops down a bit. Aye, aye. <laughs> oh, why is it always me? Look out! See that? Went straight through a red light. That must be raving mad. <laughs> I'd get out of there if I were you, Make The lights have changed. No, oh, not again! The warning, Mac. I might have been trampled otherwise. Ow! Ooh. I'll always look out for you, Mac. Oh, thanks, Mac. Uh -huh. Business executives travelled club class. This is Tarzan Air welcoming you to our 9 a.m. flight. This enabled them to travel across the village and back in a single day. Secretarial services and in flight catering were included. And remember, Tarzan Air gets you there on time every time. Come on, everybody, let's swing it! Uh, hello. Allow me to introduce myself, my friend. I'm Tricky Dicky. You're not from round here, are you? Or are you? No, Tricky Dicky. I'm from over there, actually. <laughs> That's very amusing, that is, Mr Mick. And how do I know your name? Do I hear you ask? Because I never miss an episode of this great series. It's the best thing on TV. Now, down to business. Would you say that you like gold, Mick, eh? Gold? Oh, yes. One of my friends is a gold microphone who once worked with Frank Sinatra. Sinatra? No, that doesn't sound familiar. Would he be one of the old blue eyes type? Yeah, something like that. Look what I've got for you. Whoa. Well... It's hurting me eyes, it's so bright. Here, you're a walking jewellery store, Tricky. Where did you get all these watches Not from? Not so anyway? loud, Mick. I won't shout about it. Not that there's anything illegal here, right? Ah, oh, the police. Well, I'd love to stop and chat, Mick, but I left a missionary in the microwave. He's what? Missionary in the... Oh, I didn't realise he was a cannibal. You'll not be surprised to find out, Mick, that one of their prime sources of income was the production of gold. Hey? 
megawatts of a battery flat by the flat foot. Ow! Cold was also the reason for the increasing number of inmates in prison. Eh, uh. uh, Mick laddie, I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Look out! Gary likes salt! Gary, Gary! Salty, salty, salty! Oh, no! They also excelled at the extraction and marketing of salt. I'm a microchip, not a potato chip! <laughs> Gambling and various games of chance were also popular with the locals. Oh, lucky bananas! Board games had their place too. That's Golo Golo and Yum Yum, Chief of the Cannibals. Right, pawn to Queen's Bishop One. <laughs> Ah! I said pawn to Queen's Bishop One. Now get a move on, Juggies. <laughs> Reet, your turn, Golo Golo. Oh, oh, um. Hey, I said your turn. Are you there for what? Even playing dirty with your own players, eh, Yum Yum? The Bantu were also experts at hunting, fishing, and using the bow and arrow, which they made themselves. Uh. Uh, I get it, Mac. And as this episode is all about goalkeepers, I bet that's why they're called archers in some countries, eh? Hey? Uh, you may be right there, laddie. Hey, look, there's your African ancestor, Mac Witango. Now, look, are you what? really sure this is going to uh, work, Dad? Of eh? course, son. Sure as my name's William mm -hmm. Tell. Oh, we could be here all day waiting for these fellas to shoot. Now, if you're ready, aim and shoot! And they told me when I moved into this apple that I was moving into a nice, quiet neighbourhood. Imagine, sir. And I didn't mind on it. Take evasive action. <laughs> oh, there's a breeze coming up. Target identified. Bullseye. But the sport that was to create a sensation in Monomatapa came about during a territorial argument between some apes and some of the tribe's warriors. <laughs> Of course, this must be how baseball started then, Mac. And not only that, Whoa! Mac, just keep your eyes on that gorilla. I thought they were normally placid creatures. Still, I suppose an apple in the bush can annoy anybody. Whoa! Hi, hi. You want to play rough? Bet you can't get it away from me. Come on, you big ape. Oh? Hey, I don't know what this is, but I like it. Not a bad player, but he doesn't half hog the ball. This exciting game soon became popular, and tournaments were held between all the tribes on the continent. What we're looking at now is a game between the Patuzzi tribe, a team with great aerial technique, and their opposition, the Pygmies. Short in stature, but with great skill at ground level. <laughs> Not such a mismatch as it might have appeared. <laughs> Waterlogged wavelengths. They'll have to cool off the game. It's wetter out there than a wet weekend in Wales. Don't worry about the storms, Mick. They're quite normal in this region, and all the fields in this area have a drainage system installed to cope with such sudden downpour. And very effective they are, too. <laughs> aye, aye, someone's pulled the plug. That's it. Drink up, fellas. The conventional theory supposes that this landmass was joined to other continents millions of years ago. However, some believe that it was actually this drainage system that created the continent of Africa. Two very different teams dominated the African Championship. First, there was Sporting Monomatapa, uh -huh. a team known for its skill and football artistry, as well as for its sportsmanship. Then there was the Cannibals FC, a team whose tactics relied on threats and physical violence, yeah. and their complete wow. ignorance of the subtleties and finer points of football. Both teams reached the final of the Africa Cup. The ground was packed with passionate fans from both tribes. Cool, listen, those fine young cannibals don't half make a racket. The Sporting Monomatapa fans were from the Yeli tribe and used chants and drums to urge on their team. These are the cannibal fans. 
cannibals. Oh, I'm going to stay with the mono Watsons, even if Tubby does keep banging on that drum. Good thing I've a microphone and not an earphone, or they'd have blasted all me circuits. The cannibals had a more violent way of urging their team to victory. Maybe they thought they'd be the fans' lunch if they lost, eh? You don't suppose these cannibals would stoop to eating microphones, do you? This is White Gorilla calling Red Monkey, over. Red Monkey to White Gorilla. Everything's under control. What's up, White Gorilla? Well, what's up is that you're treading on my foot, Red Monkey, over. White Gorilla, I'll move uh, over, over. That's better. Phew, over. There were impressive security measures laid on for the Sovereign. Well, there might be, but I can't see him. What's his name? Shh. In this society, it's strictly forbidden to use his name. Seems a bit pointless. Well, who's that, then? Ah, a foreign player has just been signed by the spotting mono Matapa called Dugout Maradonga. <laughs> Maradonga? My ancestor, oh. Mac Witango, refereed this historic game. We'll make mincemeat out of you lot, Golo Golo. And he played a fundamental role in creating rules relating to goalkeepers. That is Sporting's goalkeeper, Rubber Bando. The cannibal's goalkeeper was Gumbo Gulpa, who had his own ideas on what was meant by the goal mouth. Cool, what an appetite, eh? And what table manners! <laughs> Microphones! That goal up goal up runs like the wind! But any crosses are bound to be gobbled up by the defence. Oh, that's some clearance. Fortunately, Will had arranged for some ball boys to fetch the balls and return them. Oh, I hope he's going to wipe that before he adds it back. Do you know who he's such a show off? It's all right, we'll sort him out. I'll see if I can warm him up a bit, eh? <laughs> this gracious great... Oh, no, I better not do that one. The Lord of the Jungle must have a hot date somewhere. That crocodile must like his rump steak well done. Can't be very easy to get flame-grilled loin cloth in the jungle. <laughs> and that is how Tarzan's famous cry came about. No, that wasn't a goalie. What do you mean, no, a goalie? Leave him to me, Mumbo Jumbo. I'll eat him. Be quiet, Chomper. Mumbo Jumbo committed an offence by jumping over the sporting goalkeeper to hit the ball. This lot seemed determined to foul the opposition. Or eat him. Well, the sporting goalkeeper, Rubber Bando's, recovered now, so let's get on with it. Oh, good. Wow. Now you'll see how effective Will the Magician's healing methods are. Half a pound of dripping and a big Brussels sprout. Knobbly knees and mushy peas will soon have you out. Are you? All right, rubber bando, but I'm not sure you can play on without your head. Hold on, let me see that a minute. This will make the perfect size for my key ring. Now then. A key ring? What do you think I am? A free gift at a petrol station? This head's mine now. Go on, get out of it. Hi, how you doing, Epitome, my friend? Your wife gonna publish a cannibal cookbook? Oh, makes my mouth water. Had any friends around for dinner? I don't know, Mac. These cannibals seem happy with a nil-nil draw. That isn't gonna help the game at all. They'd rather eat than play football. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. No, if you don't like your friends, leave them on the Hold side of the there, site, huh? Gulper. That's a free kick for time-wasting. And I'll take this opportunity to remind you that you're not allowed to take more than four steps while holding the ball. It's in the rules of the game, laddie. Now, let's get on with it. Thank you. Three Thank you. No foul, no free kick. A player can pass back to his goalkeeper using his head, <laughs> chest, or his legs. It's in the rules of the game, boys. What you laughing at? <laughs> I'll wipe that smile off your face if you're not careful, you big no rubber face. You wouldn't like the taste of me, Mumbo Jumbo. I'm all Boom. sweaty and horrible. Yellow card, the goalkeeper has fouled an opposing player by deliberately aiming the ball at him. <laughs> Since the offence took place in the penalty area, that's a penalty, Rubber Bando. Cast a spell to get my teeth Don't back. worry, Mumbo Jumbo. I'll soon have you sorted out. Life. There's no need for spells with this Super Bantu glue. Well, have you fixed up in no time? Oh, 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 oh. oh, what a smashing job. Still, better grin and bear it, eh? Ha <laughs> ha! Hey! 
tell him to keep still, Matt Watango. For your information, Mumbo Jumbo, goalkeepers can move horizontally on their line before a penalty's taken. It's in the rules of the game, lad. <laughs> This football or ping pong? Oh, I don't feel well. <laughs> well, we've seen some odd scoreboards in the series so far, but this beats them all by a neck. Ha! Gotcha! Oh, did you see that, Mick? A fine example of fair play. Golo Golo jumped over the goalie to avoid hurting him. Boy, what do you think you're doing? I ain't a meatball, you know. On. When did football start answering back, eh? Yeah. Come off it! What have I done this time? I don't know, but I hope it's serious. You had possession of the ball for too long. The rules give you six seconds to get rid of it. Indirect free kick. Sorry. One all at half time and time for refreshments. After using up so much energy, the cannibal fans had to build up their strength. You won't believe what they put in their stew. Curry, get out of there, kid. Curry. What are you doing in there? Get out or you'll spoil. Uh. Ah! After refreshments, the second half began. Shoot! Come on, Aye. shoot! You're all. Uh. If I get me hands on you, I'll roast you alive. I'll make a sauce out of you and I'll never watch any of your films again. They want to be careful they don't get indigestion. Someone they yet may disagree with them. Oh, now that's what I call a crowded gold bell. Hey, everybody, look, a flying elephant. Don't listen to him, Rubber Bands. Oh, you know what Slicky Dicky's like. Foul, free kick. An offence is committed against the goalkeeper when one or more opponents stand in front of him and try to distract or obstruct him. It's in the rules of the game. Ah! Aye, aye, playing the sweeper system, ah! then. <coughs> oh, that's not good. It can't be. That rubber-footed fool scored direct from a goal kick. It's not allowed. Come on, Ray. Wrong. A goalkeeper can score direct from a goal kick. You should read the rules, laddie. The goal stands. Now let's get on with the game. Time's running out. This might be the Cannibals' last chance to tie it up. Aye, right, there's only a minute left and they need an equaliser. Okay. It's against the rules to charge the goalkeeper inside his own area. Oh. Oh. This has been a cracking game. Wait till I tell Don McKayley. He just won't believe it. I'd better take some photographs back as proof. I've got. I'll make an unbeatable goalkeeper. You'll get hurt, my wee chum. No, I won't. Just kick it, will you? All right. <laughs> Are you OK, Mick? I never felt better. That's quite a kick you've got. Just like a pro. That's enough buttering me up. I ain't a cannibal. Oh, dear. No, you're a microphone that's quickly getting on my nerves. Come on, we'll have to review the rules concerning goalkeepers. Now, we know that the goalkeeper is the only player who can touch the ball with his hands in his own goal area. And to distinguish him from other players and the referee, he needs to wear a different coloured strip. When he's facing a corner, his opponents may not obstruct or distract him in any way. So a goalkeeper is 
Well, he's untouchable. Untouchable? Hey, did I hear someone call my name? Elliot Mouse at your service. Look, it's Elliot Mouse, our cartoon buddy from Cheese Cargo. Try and concentrate. An indirect free kick will be awarded if a player tries to block a goal kick. And the goalkeeper can leave his area like any other player. He can also take corners, throw-ins, and is even allowed to take penalties. What was all that about six seconds, though? To go to the bathroom or what? No! What for, then? Six seconds is the maximum amount of time a keeper may hold onto the ball after receiving it. He's also only allowed four steps with it in his hand. He has to get it back into play quickly. The rules also say a teammate cannot pass the ball into the hands of his keeper during open play or from a throw-in. He may, however, pass back using his head or chest. Once the goalkeeper has released the ball, he may not pick it up with his hands until an opponent touches it. He can only use his feet. Those last rules are to avoid time-wasting and make football more exciting. So the goalkeeper can't have control of the ball for very long at all, then? Ooh! Aye, that's true, but with you, six seconds is more than enough to destroy my house. I've seen better dribbling at a referee's convention, you high impedance half-wit. Well, I'd love to stop and chat, Mac, but I've work to do. Just make sure you've got fresh batteries for your next assignment. Oh, I will. Ow! Oh, ow! Now turn off! India, a land of unique history. It was there, for example, where the number zero was invented because it looked like the yawns of fans watching a goalless game. In the 16th century, it was a varied country with many religions and cultures. Only the king of sports, football, could bring everyone together. So dash past the defence, get past the goalkeeper, and come with us to magical India, where my ancestor, Matt Carmen, invented the goal kick. So visit a world filled with humour and football in the next episode of Football Story. Right, you meddlesome microphone, we're going to sing the Fair Play song, and this time I want to hear you. Oh, do stop shouting, Mac. I always join in the Fair Play song.